gun sense today. Who can tell me the origin of the word gun sense? Where that came from? Somebody raise your hand. Came from Michael Bloomberg and Mom, the Moms Demand Action Gun Control. They invented that. Time. You guys got to hear that today. Uh, well, enough about that. I'm uh, Keith Morgan. I'm president of the West Virginia Citizens Defense League. Uh, we're the state's largest grassroots activism lobbying organization. Uh, we're 501c4, so we do lobbying. We do some uh, electioneering work, things like that. But generally, uh, we're an activism project uh, to advance gun rights. And I'm here uh, in, in no small part today to, to thank uh, this organization. It was, was it two years ago, I think, that Gary sent an email and copied uh, myself and the NRA ILA liaison and said, guys, why don't we all work together and, and get some things done? And my response to that uh, as president of WBCDL was, look, guys, we're all pulling in the same direction. Why don't we grab the same road? And we did it. And the WBCDL, the NRA, and the uh, State Rifle and Pistol Association actually lined up our legislative priorities so that we were all saying the same things to the legislators down in the Capitol. I cannot begin to tell you how effective that has been. We have gotten enormous things accomplished, many of which you probably haven't heard because there have been some high-profile stories that are eclipsing all of the other good stuff that's been done. So I'm going I'm to line that out for you. Last year, we got the statewide preemption bill passed. So this was a joint effort between uh, the NRA, uh, <coughs> Rifle and Pistol Association, and the WBCDL. That's a huge step forward so that as you go from city to city in West Virginia, you're not violating a law, something that's legal in Wheeling, not legal in Charleston, et cetera, et cetera. You got one set of laws to know, and that way you stay a law-abiding citizen. Don't step on a landmine, some little town somewhere in West Virginia. Um, here, are the number one priority, and this was stated to me by Gary and by uh, uh, the NRA ILA prior to the start of this session, well, prior to the last election, because that changed the landscape a little, was the number one priority for all of us was uh, concealed handgun license property. <laughs> right now, newspapers are printing our information, our personal information, if we get a license. In New York, they submitted FOIA requests and mapped us like sex offenders on Google. In West Virginia, the Ogden Papers Group, which runs about seven northern newspapers, submitted a FOIA request to a number of sheriffs in northern counties saying give us all the personal information of all the concealed handgun license holders. Your name, your address, all that information, everything that goes on that form. Fortunately, the sheriffs up there told them, told the papers to pound sand, come sue us. Uh, but I'll, I'm here to tell you that under law last year, if, if they have filed an appeal, they'd have won. We'd have been on the map somewhere, right to our house, right where we live. Um, so this was a serious issue that the NRA and the WBCDL definitely wanted to fix. I'm pleased to say that it is sitting on the governor's desk today waiting for his signature. And we do expect the governor to sign it. So this is a huge leap forward for West Virginia. And I'm telling you, three, four years ago, the notion that we could take on the Charleston Gazette the Huntington Herald, the Martinsburg Journal, and win would have been a joke. But we won, and trust me, uh, that the newspapers and media are not happy about this. Tough. That's my view on it. Tough. That information needs to be private. So those of you who uh, open carry, there's good news. And this, this is a mixed bag. There is an L3 introduction bill that went through. It's House Bill 2515. It too has passed. Literally with 30 minutes left to go in the session, Senator Robert, Robert Carnes from Upshur County jammed another bill into the elk bill, took the whole thing and just shoehorned it in there. What this does, we say we're an open carry state. It's illegal to open carry. Well, there are some gotchas with that. You get in the vehicle, you got a loaded firearm in the vehicle and you don't have a license, you're poaching. 
you're in the woods. You got a loaded firearm in the woods, whether it's for self-defense or not. You don't have a license, you're poaching. Uh, we got that fixed. That's fixed in there. How many of you are aware that under state law, if you pull the magazine, you go to the range, you pop the magazine out of your rifle, you clear the chamber, you throw the magazine, the rifle in the case, guess what? You're poaching because you didn't remove every cartridge from that magazine. We got that fixed in this bill as well. Uh, so Robert Carnes really pulled a stroke of genius to protect us from, from silly laws uh, that were honestly written long before people could carry firearms. All the, all the DNR hunting code was written in the 60s. Nobody could carry a gun in the 60s. Now everybody can carry a gun. And uh, so the, the laws are getting fixed. And, and I'll tell you, the uh, new director of DNR, great guy, very pro-hunting guy, and we worked very closely with him. So we're very excited to be working with DNR. Frankly, as a pro-hunting group, WBCDL, we need a good relationship with DNR, and, and it's been working out really well with it. Uh, Capitol Complex parking. If you go to the Capitol now, you can leave a loaded gun in your car on the Capitol Complex as long as it's hidden from view. I don't know if this is a big issue for a lot of you guys, but a lot of my organization, we go down to the Capitol. And uh, it's good for us because uh, we don't violate the law just by carrying a firearm in the car, locking it up. Still can't carry on Capitol Complex property, but at least you can lock it in your car so you're not disarmed all day when you go down there. There's also uh, Senate Bill 284. This is a huge win. Anybody uh, do suppressors, <clears throat> short barreled shotguns, short barreled rifles, etc. cetera? See, see a hand or two popping up up there. If you are unfortunately in a county like Mon or Harrison County, Kanawha County, with a really, really anti-gun sheriff, they will not sign off on a transfer for a suppressor, short barrel rifle, short barrel shotgun. They won't do it, unless of course you're in the good old boys crowd. They'll sign off for their friends. We, we've seen that happen. Uh, so it's one set of rules for me and another for B. Well, that's fixed. Uh, Senate Bill 284, every sheriff in the county has 30 days to sign off on a transfer of an NFA item. So if he doesn't like you, doesn't like suppressors, doesn't like machine guns, doesn't like short barrel shotguns just because he's anti-gun, tough. He has to sign anyway. The only way he can deny you is if he can prove that you're a disqualified person. So felon, uh, domestic violence, drug addict, all those things that disqualify you from gun ownership anyway. Um, and we are all due, we all owe Dan Perry, the NRA, ILA lobbyist, a huge amount of thanks on this. Uh, I'm in that Capitol every session and I have never seen the NRA engage as fiercely as they did this session. It actually really made me proud to be an NRA member. Uh, they really brought the fight to West Virginia. Uh, so we greatly appreciate that. Um, now to the elephant on the Constitutional Carry Bill. There's been a great deal of confusion about this bill. And I think part, part of it probably stems from, from an incorrect mindset from a lot of people statewide. Um, and that's this misconception that the Second Amendment has anything at all to do with hunting. I, if, you did, if you disagree with that, I've got some bad news for you. I would encourage you to read Federalist Papers number 46 which justifies the Second Amendment, and you're going to find out that hunting is not mentioned in it anywhere. The Second Amendment has its purposes. I'll let you go find out what those purposes are from the words of James Madison. So make a mental note, Federalist Papers 46, go read it. Um, I will read to you in our state constitution, hunting actually is a factor. I want to, I want to read the this, this, uh, Keep and Bear Arms Clause of the state constitution to you because I think that the wording is really important. A person has the right to keep and bear arms for the defense of self, family, home, state, and for lawful hunting and recreational purposes. 
The first reason for our state's right to keep the bear arms clause is self-defense. That is the primary reason that we have a right to keep and bear arms in the state of West Virginia. So I want you guys to think about that as well. Um, <coughs> unfortunately, the WBCDL, the NRA, the Rifle Pistol <coughs> Association, this year we were hamstrung by truth. We were hamstrung by our own integrity and our own unwillingness to lie. There are other groups who did not suffer that handy. Uh, media, basically every single media article on constitutional carry included at least one and on average five or more verifiable outright lies. So that makes it tough. When you're hamstrung by the truth, it takes a while to educate people, let, let them know what the truth is. So first off, the media came out against constitutional carry and the sheriffs came out against constitutional carry. Um, the sheriffs, their motive is obvious, even though they deny it, it's all that money they lose. That money goes into their discretionary funds, which means it's their play money. It's a, it's a slush funding by whatever they want with it. We have one sheriff in Ritchie County that bought himself pilot's license lessons, flying lessons. So, uh, the Sheriff's Association came out and let me tell you, they were not burdened by truth. Um, their main claim was officer safety. Well, if you ask any trooper in the state of West Virginia, he will tell you we treat every contact with the public as if they are armed. And in discussions with various sheriffs, it was, how will anything be different for you? Are you going to ask a contact, sir, do you have any weapons on you? Well, no, I don't have any guns. Okay, and then turn your back to him? No, you're going to treat everybody as if they're armed unless proven otherwise, because that's how you stay alive on the street. So that is how they're trained. That's how they operate. If you've ever watched them during a traffic stop, you've given them no indication that you're a criminal. They are still treating you as if, they, as if you are armed. When they approach your window, they're at a, an angle where it would be very difficult for you to get a firearm on target with them. They treat us all as if we're on. It's not about officer safety. Um, we just heard today that every law enforcement officer or agency in West Virginia opposed this, opposed constitutional carry. Not one peep from the West Virginia State Police in favor or against. The West Virginia State Police were completely silent. That should tell you something. It should tell you something about where they really are on this. The other big lie that we saw, this one was repeated a lot. Anybody will be able to carry a gun now. Felons, drug dealers, wife abusers, uh, drug addicts, drunks, everybody gets to carry a gun if this bill passes. Completely and utterly a lie. The reason for that is if you're a convicted felon, if you're a domestic abuser, if you're addicted to drugs or alcohol, if you've uh, been adjudicated, uh, well, what is the word, um, psychologically, whatever the word for crazy is, the technical legal term. Um, well, no incompetent. Yeah, whack them under, that's the technical term, right? Uh, so you cannot even possess a firearm. If you can't possess it, how in the world are you going to carry it? I think that possession is a prerequisite for carrying. I think. Uh, so, yeah, you, nobody in, in constitutional carry does not change who is allowed to possess a firearm. All those people we don't want carrying guns, all those people the WBCDL don't want carrying guns, still could not carry guns. It would still be a felony. Now here's where law enforcement shot themselves in the foot in two different ways. One, in the state of Arizona, when they went constitutional carry, people who normally were not carrying handguns for self-defense prior, they didn't want to jump through all the hoops, pay the money, whatever the case may be, started carrying. And then they went across state lines and realized, well, I can't carry anymore. Well, those of you who carry regularly can tell you how naked you feel when uh, 
a policy or something that forces you to be disarmed somewhere. So what would happen, all these people crossing state lines and go, man, I, I want to carry when I'm in, the, in New Mexico. I want to carry when I'm in Utah. So what happened in Arizona, the permits after constitutional carry passed, actually increased. The rate increased too. It went from about 3,000 a year to about 10,000 a year. So the sheriff shot themselves in the foot on revenue. The second thing, way that they shot themselves in the foot, there was a lot of complaining from law enforcement. We're going to have uh, gangbangers from Michigan and Columbus coming in and wreaking all kinds of havoc. Uh, yeah, they love to say Detroit. And <laughs> the what we what we did, we got thrown into the bill. There's a, a project. How many of you have heard the term Project Exile? Nobody has. Anybody remember the murder rate in the city of Richmond, Virginia in about 1997? Richmond, Virginia was the deadliest city in the United States. It's not much bigger than Charleston, and they were having four to five murders a night in Richmond. Very deadly city. So what happened is the law enforcement and prosecutors in Richmond said, you know those federal laws against gangsters guns, committing crimes with guns. It's a mandatory five-year sentence. They said, let's take all of these local crimes where guns are involved, hand them over to the federal prosecutors. And the feds said, we'll prosecute them. We've got to do something about this. So every time a gangster committed a felony with a fire in possession of a firearm, he went to Occoquan Federal Prison for five years mandatory, and fed time is fed time. If you get five years fed time, you're going five years to the day. And that's if you're a good boy. What happened after that? The gangsters still sold drugs. They quit carrying guns when they were doing it. Because they knew it was five years mandatory and they were going to do the crime. In this constitutional carry bill, we put those provisions. So that when the drug dealers come in and they're slinging drugs, throw them in jail for five years and walk the, throw away the key. We think that law enforcement really shot themselves in the foot by getting rid of that tool. That would have been a very useful tool for them. Um, the other lie we heard a lot was it'll eliminate concealed handgun licenses. Nope. We were keeping concealed handgun licenses because <coughs> me and probably half this room want to be able to carry when we go to Virginia, to Kentucky, to Ohio, to Pennsylvania. So it made it optional for in-state carry. But our view and, and statistics have proven that most people will, will go ahead and get their license anyway so they can carry in other states. Um, we claim that it would destroy reciprocity. Nope, we didn't touch any section of code that would have touched reciprocity in any way. That was another big lie that we saw in media everywhere. And then the, the other big claim was training. Without training, everybody dies. There'll be blood growing in the street. People will be sh shooting each other in Walmart. Except we let people from Pennsylvania into our state. You guys know that Pennsylvania has no training requirement to get a concealed handgun license? Better put up a wall up in Wheeling, stop letting those crazy Pennsylvanians in here. They'll kill everybody. That not happen. No training requirement in Alaska, Arizona, Vermont, or Wyoming, where, and yet the streets are not running with blood from accidents. So that was another big one. Tell you where we're going from here. We're going to mount an education campaign for next year so that we can get this information out there. Uh, let people know that able to counter the lies. We're starting with you guys. You've heard the truth now. When you start hearing these arguments, you've got the answers to them. We are going to get involved in sheriff's races too because we found that sheriffs all over the states stepped up against our rights. So we're going to have to get involved in sheriff races. We're going to have to throw some of these guys out of office. And we're very confident that it'll pass next year. Now, anybody have any questions? All right. Well, thanks a lot. If you have any questions you don't want to ask publicly, I'll be sitting back.